Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship your name, God. We magnify your name, King Jesus. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the same. Your name is to be glorified. Your name is to be praised. Your name is to be adored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. King of kings. Lord of lords. Ruler of heaven and earth. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, great God. Hallelujah. 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 What a privilege it is to come into your presence, Lord. We worship you. We adore you, God. Father, we love you. I love you, Lord. I exalt you, God. I magnify your name. I declare that you are my God, that you are my strength. Hallelujah. Be glorified, Lord. Be magnified. Be exalted. We worship and we adore you. Oh, great God. Hallelujah. We worship and we adore you. I worship and I adore you, Father, for there is none like you. I thank you for the opportunity, God, of being in your presence. Because in your presence, God, there's fullness of joy and your pleasures forevermore. So, Father, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Father, I pray that you will anoint me afresh this morning going to this afternoon, God. I pray, Lord, that I will decrease and you will increase. I pray, Spirit of the living God, that I will hide behind the rock of ages. Hallelujah. And your presence, God, your voice will be heard. Lord, I submit myself to you. I submit the system to you. I submit the internet to you, God. Father, I decree and I declare that, Father, you will make things clear. As, Father, I believe this morning you have a word for someone. Father, one more time, Almighty God, I submit, I decrease, and I pray that you, Holy Spirit, will increase more than ever before. I say thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Let's turn to somebody and tell him it's good to see you. Turn to your neighbor and tell him it's good to see you. If you don't have a neighbor, pat yourself on your chest and say, thank God I woke up this morning. Thank God I woke up this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We give the Lord the glory. We give him the praise. He's a good, good, good God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to take the opportunity and say welcome um, to each and every one of you. I thank you for joining us at Kingdom Builders Worship Center this morning, going into this afternoon. Earlier when I was on, I heard the man of God said we had, I think, two visitors in the hall. Could we just put our hands together and just clap them one more time? Let's clap them one more time. Make them feel welcome. Matter of fact, could somebody just go over to one of them and just shake their hands and say, hey, it's good to see you. It's good. Come on, move over. Tell the person. Say, it's good to see you. Shake. Uh, thank you, Miss Dart, for moving. Bless God. Somebody has moved to the other side. I think that is, that is. Um, I was going to say Shanae, but no, I'm sorry. That is Mrs. Allen. Don't make a mistake and say Shanae. She's Mrs. Allen. Bless God. We bless God for you. Thank you guys um, for joining us. Um, Lichelle, uh, I think that's how your name is pronounced. We also want to um, give you a virtual hug or a virtual high five as we see that you are here 
online with us and we give God the glory. Oh, Kashina, Pastor Kashina, guess what? Shan is out with our video on. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. No more Thursday night in the dark. I don't even know if she knew her video was on. Bless God, but it's good to see you, Shan. To God be the glory. Thank you very much for joining us this morning into this afternoon as we declare the word of God. I also want to, to greet those who are on Facebook. I understand that we are going Facebook Live, so I greet each and every one of you. And I pray that this morning that the Lord will speak to your heart. For those who will watch us on YouTube later on, I also take the opportunity to greet you all in the blessed name of Jesus. Again, I also want to take the opportunity to greet the Glenvilles, um, Pastor and Minister Glenville. Can you put your hands together as you help me to honor the man and woman of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God for them. I see Pastor Grace Anna. Um, but Osborne is online and we also want to honor, put your hands together and honor the woman of God for me. Thank you very much. I also want to honor, I, I, I shared a testimony this morning um, in Pennsylvania about, you know, how my wife and I have been married for however long and all the different things. And I just bless God for her. Can you just help me to honor my dear wife, um, Pastor Kashina Alexander McLean? Um, she's my strength, my everything. Um, as I was about to say some things, I remember a video she sent me with guys who go extra when they announce their wives. So I'm not going to say anything else. I'm just going to leave it at that and just say, bless God for you, woman of God. Um, this morning, again, I believe, um, there's a word for you from the Lord. I won't be long. Um, if you recognize Minister Michael, you have not been long, um, over the last couple of weeks, bless God. Um, you know, I'm doing it like Minister Michelle Johnson, just hit it and move on. Um, but I thank God. I thank God for um, each and every one of you. But this morning, we want to we want to release a word over you. Um, and I'll tell you the theme shortly. Right. Um, in 2020, we had a, a retreat, as you all know, the November retreat. Right. And we went on the retreat and we had a wonderful time. And um, the Lord, Spirit of the Lord moved. We, we went to Raf Jam. I don't remember the location of Raf Jam. I know it is somewhere up in the hills. Um, but on our way, when we decided to come back, then there was a, 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 a storm that hit Jamaica. And as that storm hit Jamaica, we, we, we found that the roads um, were impassable. As a matter of fact, the roads were blocked coming from Papine down right irish stone thank you very much um woman of god um so coming from irish on the work the roads were blocked nobody could could come off the hill i remember um my family and i and, and i think yeah luigi we we had a flight to catch on monday right um and this was sunday and there were persons who had work to go um on Monday morning. And I remember as we were driving and we had the lines of car just lining out on the street, um, and we we're taking our time. And when we got to the spot, I remember the guy saying, you can't go any further. You have to turn back, bless the Lord. And I, I, I remember I, 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 I jumped out of the car um, and I was like, oh my God, turn back. You know, there are so many people I have here and I have a responsibility to get them home. And I remember Jerome and I, we went to one of the guys and they was like, listen, you, you can't, you can't pass. I'm sorry. Um, you have to go back. Um, we told the, 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 the rest of the retreaters to, to stay put. And we pulled over and Jerome and I, as we, we went, we went a little further. And as we went a little further, we, we found um, a group of guys and, 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 and we, they said, listen, there's one other route and, and that route is down that way. But I don't think you can go there. Cause if you, if you attempt to go down there, um, 
you won't be able to come on. And then he said something very important. He said, I, I don't believe that you can go. And as a matter of fact, if you go and you get stuck, we will not help you. I remember that. And, and I looked at Jerome and I, and I remember. I said, I said, Jerome, we have to get these people home. Um, these people are depending on us. And Jerome and I made a decision. We made a decision not to um, stay in our unbelief that the guy had released on us, but we made a decision that we were going to trust God and believe God. And we said, listen, we are going to take the route first. Hallelujah. So we 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 we, we went down um, the 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 the. the that road. Um, for those of you who remember, I don't even know the words to describe the road. It wasn't even a road. It wasn't even a truck. But it was It was so dangerous. Um, if, if, if you didn't put the car wheel at a particular place, your car would slide. There were times if your car slid, um, you don't know where it's going to end up. But I want to tell someone that we did something. We believe, Jerome and I, we drove all the way down and we drove back up the same path and then we said to the retreaters follow us because there is a route it seems difficult but guess what we have gone the route before and we believe we believe we believe that it can work this morning i want to speak to someone whether you're on facebook whether you're on all whether you are on youtube i Cure your unbelief. Tell your neighbor it's time to cure your unbelief. Mighty God, I feel excited. I feel excited about uh, um, this year, 2023. I know the year will be challenging, but I hear God says this morning, Michael Lee, I want to cure your unbelief. I hear the Lord says, Pastor Kashina, I want to cure your unbelief. I hear somebody saying, but sir, who tells you that I have an unbelief? I have faith as small as a mustard seed. Can I tell you, every single person, as anointed as you think you are, you have something, um, you have an unbelief. There's something that you don't believe. Uh, it doesn't matter. Can I tell you, maybe you have faith uh, for, um, for, for a job. But guess what? Uh, you might not have uh, a faith uh, or you might have an unbelief uh, for something else in your life. Uh, this morning, uh, we want a cure or unbelief. Bless the name of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The fact is that we all struggle with this sin. And that's what I call it. Sin. Unbelief is a sin. Now, this new season of starting fresh, we have to know Kingdom Builders Worship Center, the cure for our unbelief. In this season of new beginnings, we have to develop a trust, a faith, and a belief in God, the same God that we say we love. Hallelujah. I want somebody to catch this statement. My unbelief is a lack of trust in God. Tell your neighbor, my unbelief is a lack of trust in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the scripture we read was we can also find the same passage in Matthew or in Luke. However, Mark, I believe, gives us a, a, a bigger picture. And I want to thank uh, Sister Dorian for reading for us this morning. But there is something I noticed, though, Church of God, that the previous verses, it shows the disciples and Jesus coming from the Mount of Transfiguration. In other words, Church of the Living God, they were coming from a high moment. Is the church still following me? They were yeah. coming from a high moment. You have been there. How many times have you gone to a retreat? How many times have you gone to church? And the experience is so good, Sister Fiona. You wish that you wouldn't leave that place. Can I tell you the three disciples and Jesus, 
they, they, they had that same sense and they had that same feeling. But can I pause this morning, hallelujah, and tell someone that after every high moment will come a challenge, mighty God of Zion. After every high moment will come a challenge or Pastor Kashina will come a move from Satan that will disrupt your progress. I wish somebody would say it's time to cure my unbelief. Hallelujah. Now, now this man in the passage, he had an issue and his son needed to be healed. And he came to Jesus, not to the disciples. Follow me here. He came to Jesus because he either heard or I'm sure maybe he saw that Jesus and his disciples had done miracles and healings. However, the scripture tells us that when the man brought his son who was demon possessed to be healed by Jesus, Jesus was having what? An encounter with his father. <laughs> When the man came to Jesus, Jesus was having an encounter with his father at the time. So the man decided, okay, the disciples are normally with Jesus. So I'm going to ask his disciples to what? To rebuke and cast out the demons out of my son. But scripture tells us, scripture tells us, church of the living God, that what? The disciples couldn't cast the demons out. Come on, church, how could that be? You mean the disciples that walk and sat with Jesus? The disciples that sat at Jesus' feet? How is it that they could not cast the demons out? How many times, church of the living God, have we feel defeated by a situation in our lives? That's a personal question. How many times have you or I tried casting out a demon in our own life, but it remains and still causes a havoc? How many times have we spent hours trying to help a team casting out a demon and nothing? How many times have you and I say that we are victorious, yet tomorrow we struggle with what we claim we conquered yesterday? I feel I need to repeat that one. How many times do we say that we are victorious, yet tomorrow we struggle with what we claim we conquered yesterday? Hallelujah. But, but, but I get the feeling from verse 19. Listen, listen what verse 19 says. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? I'm going to stop it there. I get the feeling, and this is my feeling, that it seemed like Jesus was frustrated as his disciples. That Jesus was like saying in Jamaican terms, come on, guys. Um, what do you know? Sorry, Sister Terry, I'm sure you'll get it later. It's like, what did happen? Right? I get from reading this that Jesus might have, have just sighed and said, How long? How long? I wonder if those kingdom builders, worship center, and friends. I wonder, does Jesus respond like this when he sees you and I failing again? Not at different things, but at the same thing we struggled with the day before. Can I ask a question? Is our unbelief why we are faithless? Hallelujah. Is our unbelief why we fall into depression? Is it our unbelief why we keep falling into the same traps? Jesus said to the man, bring the boy to me. In Jamaican term, bring him come. And again, I thought maybe he just sighed. But the next verse is a new to Jesus. This is what verse 20 said. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, ah, oh, mighty God, ah, oh, it threw the child into violent convulsion and he fell to the ground, foaming at the mouth. Can I tell you, that was the response of the demon. Listen, if we go back to Mark chapter 5, it tells about the man possessed 
by demons at the tomb. And we saw where those demons responded the same way. We see that when Jesus steps on the scene, demons recognize him. Why? Because Jesus' lifestyle made, made, made demons recognize him. Does the church is the church following me? The lifestyle of Jesus. And when I say lifestyle, uh, for some of us, uh, the lifestyle we have at church, Pastor Kashina, is not the lifestyle we have at home. The lifestyle we have at work uh, is not the lifestyle we have uh, when we're amongst our family. But Jesus had one lifestyle. Hallelujah. And wherever demons saw Jesus, uh, they what? They recognize him. We see so many places in scripture that after ministry, I'm talking about Jesus' lifestyle. After ministry, he would went away to spend not just time, but a long time with his father. Can I tell somebody that in order to cure your unbelief in 2023, you need some alone time with God. I'm not just talking military devotion time. I am talking outside. Hallelujah. Outside of the scheduled devotion, I'm talking a time where you separate from everybody, where you say, you know what, I'm either leaving work early, or I'm staying at work, locking up my office, or I'm going to the park, or wherever, just me and God, no brother, no sister, no husband, no wife, no children, no nothing, just you I'm God. Hallelujah. I remember a couple of years ago, I was a mess. Pastor Kashina, before you met me, I was a mess. Can I say this? I was a dog. I knew nothing. I didn't know how to treat women with respect. I believe that women were a piece of material you use and you put away and i remember when god met me and he said what are you doing you need some time with me and for one year the lord would have sent me to devon house not devon somebody's house but devon house by half a tree and the lord says all i want you to bring is a bible and a towel and i brought a bible and for one year, every Saturday, I sat in the grass and I read the Bible because I said, God, I needed to understand who I was. Can I tell you, after that, you recognize recognize that was God's gift to women that I taught. But I was a wreck in life. I was a wreck in marriage. I attended school and I attended school. You need to spend a long time with God, not just your devotion time, but separate from your devotion time, from your church time. I remember this morning, Sister Marlena spoke about investment, how many of us, we talked about it, how many of us actually invest in our Christianity, but guess what? We expect to, to, to reap from an investment. Hallelujah. If you don't put any money in your investment, I'm talking your bank. Can you, Sister Fiona, maybe you can help me. Or no, Sister Shane, because you're into accounting. Help me here. If you don't put any money into the account, can you go to the bank and collect? No. So, so how is it then that you don't put any time into growing with God? You don't help me, Holy Ghost. And this is not what I want to talk about. You, you don't throw three times. You, 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 come, you, you give a little um, $50 you know, on Sunday so that somebody can say that you're throwing something, but you don't throw your tithes, but yet you expect God to bless you bountifully. Am I talking to the church? I pray the church is hearing me. Jesus' lifestyle was centered. It was centered on ministry, not to people, but ministry to God. Mighty God. You think all the time Jesus was going around, um, Pastor Elect and Minister Michelle. You think all the time when Jesus was going around, it was ministry to people. It was it was an assignment that God sent him on, and he was ministering to God. 
Hallelujah. Can I tell you that Jesus didn't walk with unbelief? Jesus didn't entertain unbelief. Jesus didn't allow unbelief to be a part of his lifestyle. But guess what? We are called to walk as Jesus walked and to talk as Jesus talked. I know that there's someone here in my voice that is struggling. Or if I want to help you this morning with a cure for unbelief, mighty God. So the conversation between the man who was the father and Jesus is about to get interesting, Minister Michael Lee. There's something that I want to remind each and every one of us. Something that Pastor Cash reminded us on Thursday. And we find it in John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill. To destroy. I am come that I might what? Have life. And that they may have it abundantly. Can I tell you something? That Satan, Satan, church of the living God. Satan, 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 Satan has only one intention for you. Only one. He has no other intention for you. And that one intention that Satan has is to do what? Is to kill, steal, and to destroy you, church of God. Satan was designed to do one thing. If you remember on Thursday, Pastor Cass spoke about it. He was designed to do one thing. The demon tried to kill the boy. The demon tried to kill the boy. Listen, our situation that has led us to unbelief has one intention, Pastor Grace and Abar Osborne, and that's to kill us. Your unbelief in the power of God means you actually believe in something else. Almighty oh, God. Your unbelief in the power of God means that you believe in something else. Ask yourself, based on your actions, what are your beliefs? What are your beliefs? Or God is recognizing scripture as the all-consuming fire and the stream of running water. But look exactly, Pastor Casino, where the enemy tries to take the boy's life. Look, in fire and water. So my question to you, Kingdom Builders, is are you looking at the wrong right thing yet thinking it's right because of your unbelief. Let me repeat that. Are you looking at the wrong thing, mighty God? Hallelujah. Yet thinking it's right because of your unbelief. Can I tell somebody this morning that the joy that you are missing from your life is a result of unbelief? Listen, please don't misunderstand me, children of God. I am not here saying that it's easy. I am saying all of us, including Pastor Edgar McLean, all of us, we struggle at some point with what? The spirit of unbelief in our lives. But there is a cure. There is a cure. There is, there's a what? There is a cure. Is a cure, and we need to do what? Seek after the cure. We need to do what? To do the things that will cure us. The truth is, I, I, I may have a lot of faith in seeing my kids do well, but yet I have unbelief when it comes to what my next step is. Hallelujah. So I have a lot of faith, and I said, okay, I, I have faith that Fiona is going to excel. I have faith that Kashiva is going to excel. I have all the faith, and I believe in God that Tara and all my kids are going to do well. But yet I'm struggling with, 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 with God. What's next for me? Every single one of us, every single one of us, we have something that allows unbelief to come into my, our lives. It is somewhere in 
to our lives, but it's time to activate the what? The cure in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Verse 22. The spirit often throws him into the fire <clears throat> or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us. Fiona guess that he wasn't finished. It's what the man says, Pastor Elect Michael. Have mercy on us, Jesus, if you can. <laughs> to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, have mercy on us, Sister Alain, Brother Omar, Sister Anika, Sister Opal, Michael, have mercy on us, Minister Marshall. And listen, you, you know, I'm sure that we, we're reading this and what some of us will be like, how could he say that? If you can, don't he doesn't he know who Jesus is? But but I want to pause and say to you before you jump at the man that we do it daily. <laughs> that we make this statement daily. Okay, what do you mean, Pastor? Maybe we don't say it out of our mouth, but our actions say, if you can, Jesus. Or because I don't believe that you can, I will do it this way. Because it seems like you are taking long, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will do it my way. Do you remember the story of Lazarus where they thought that, or they thought that Jesus was late? Mighty God. Ah, if you can, as a matter of fact, oh, I wish I had a church in front of me. Ah, uh, you remember when she came and she said, Jesus, I know you are the resurrection because he will be resurrected. But Jesus said, listen, uh, in my words, uh, sister, you are looking for them, uh, but I am uh, the resurrection and the life. In other words, here, can I tell somebody that God is about to cure your unbelief, not because he will come, but because the Holy Spirit is already here. I wish I had a church. Can you understand that the Holy Spirit is here to cure your unbelief? As we close, let's start looking on the cure of unbelief by examining Jesus' response. Response. Funny. When I wrote this this morning, I was like, sir, people going to say, this response doesn't really help me, you know. And, and why? Because Pastor Cash, <laughs> Pastor Eric Michael Lee, the answer is so simple. The answer is so simple. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Let me read verse 23b. So Jesus answered him when he said, if you can, Jesus asked, anything is possible if somebody does what? Believe. <laughs> anything is possible if a person believes. I want you to do me a favor. Tap your neighbor on their shoulder and say, anything is possible if you believe. I don't think that neighbor got it. Tap your other neighbor. Give them a small punch. Anything is possible from Noah, from Jacob. I say, anything is possible. Anything is possible if you only do what? Believe. Mighty God. But, 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 but I want you to look at the dad's response. The father instantly cried out, Oh, mighty God. I do believe, but Jesus, help me to overcome my unbeliever. Uh, help me, Jesus. Can I tell you, this is where the healing started because the man recognized that he had unbelief. Help me, Holy Ghost. The man recognized that his needed to change. The man recognized that, yes, I believe, but I still have some doubts. What doubts do you have, kingdom builders and friends? <laughs> what struggle, sorry, are you facing? What is happening within your body that is bringing unbelief? 
What is happening within your finances? What is happening within your children's life? What is happening within your marriage? What is happening within your job? Somebody I wish they will cry out, Jesus, help me to believe. Jesus, help me to believe. Jesus, cure my unbelief. Yes, people of God, I know in 2023, the situations are real as they get. However, in Jeremiah 32, verse 17, O Lord God, behold, the was made what? The heavens and the earth by thy great power. Nothing. Tell yourself, put your hand up in the mirror. Tell yourself, there is nothing. It's too hard for God. Matthew 19, verse 26. But Jesus looked them what with man things are impossible, Minister Michelle. But with God, Michelle, we say other things are possible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Other things are possible. Yeah. Things are possible. I don't care. What situations you face? I don't care how your back might be against the wall. I don't care how you came into church this morning, Michelle. I don't know you with a spirit of unbelief because something's not going well. But I'm here to tell you that God said it is time to clear your unbelief. I don't know what trials and tribulations you face. About to clear your unbelief. To cure your unbelief, write these steps down. <clears throat> One, repent. The first thing you have to do is repent. You have to tell God your story. But 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 Pastor, God already knows. You have to tell God your story. And when you tell him your story, you tell him that you are sorry. And then as you tell him you're sorry, you turn from being bound. You have to do what? Repent. Make a turn. Number two, the easy one. Or the one that we think is easy, but it's harder than usual. Number two, after repent, believe. <laughs> Sir, if I have unbelief, how are going to believe? That is it. Just simply believe. And that is why I like, I mean, I like Puma shoes, but I like the Nike sign. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. But, but sir, how? Just do it. Sir, mm -hmm. okay, all right. Mom, sister, talking in this time to get up for work. Oh, boy, sir, I'm tired. Okay, don't get up, Mom. Do you get up? Because if you don't get up, then there is no money. Uh, oh, Jesus, help me in this place. But, sir, I, I, I'm trying. So do you do, listen, you still get to work, though, even though you're trying. So you are trying to get rid of your unbelief, but even though you are trying to get to work, you still got to work. Church of God. Uh, I wonder if anybody remember last week. It's time to do a pump. My uh -huh. God, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, it's time to uh, to push until uh, more is produced. Uh, uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, it is time uh, to get up. It is time uh, to believe. It is time to believe. Uh, but how do you believe? Uh, because, yes, Pastor, I hear you. You're telling me to believe. Uh, but how do I believe? Uh, listen, uh, this church is a church we turn uh, to one source. Uh, and that source uh, is the word of God. Uh, so Hebrews 12 uh, Verse 1, I want somebody to listen to what it says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a crowd of witnesses, let us do what minister. Let us listen. Side, every dead weight in order for you to believe church of God you have to lay aside uh, I wish somebody was following me you have to lay aside every dead weight and sin which clings to you closely 
to believe, you have to let go of the dead weight. To believe, you have to let go of the dead weight. One, repent. Two, believe. Number three, a word that ran through our ears last year, like I wouldn't say you see and bold because he's not a, 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 a long distance runner. One of those Kenyans, you remember them name? Munta Baba Base, whatever I'm on here, I don't even know. <laughs> to cure your unbelief, the third step is you must obey Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not what? On your own understanding in all thy ways. Oh, Almighty God, somebody tell himself. In all Thy ways, in all thy ways, in the ways at work, in the ways in your marriage, in the ways in your kids, in the ways when you're in the shop, in all thy ways, acknowledge who Christ or submit to Christ, and He will what direct your path. Number three, Church of God, is obey. One, repent. Two, believe. Three, obey. Four, and final. <laughs> prayer, 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 and fasting. Uh, yeah. You hear how many prayer said? <laughs> Let me tell you something. We are walking in unbelief because we have not been praying. Pastor, what do you mean? Every morning I get up and I talk to God. Can I tell you? Let me call Pastor Cash name here because I don't want anybody to feel offended. And Fiona, because she's all right. Fiona, do you know that you have some Christians who every morning their prayer or every lunchtime, their prayer to God is for health and strength and daily food. We praise thy name, O Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. That's true. Pastor, so what they say, something is wrong with the prayer. No. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine what? if Fiona, who is, and I went to tell her age, but she's 20 something, was still asking us to put on. Pampas on her. Oh, Jesus. I, I wanted the church miss that. Okay. Can, can, can you imagine if Fiona that has grown this age every morning get up? Uh, Mommy, can I have breasts? And I cut her out. No, no. Uh, we're live. Bless God. Hallelujah. Every morning, mommy, can I have can I have titty, please? I remember Pastor Ka saying, "There is no milk in that. That is that is straight um milk powder." But we still. <laughs> can I tell you, Church of God, there are too many. <laughs> Mighty God. We still expect milk. But then we suck in on those things for milk. But, but, but the truth is, we expect, we expect somebody to give us a big house and a big car. Oh, I'm believing God for a car in 2023. Go and believe God so you can open your Bible and read it. Here, I'm gonna find the man of my dreams. Listen, God, so you can stop be selfish. For this and for that. It's time to cure your unbelief. The final verse, Jesus responds to the disciples in private when they ask, 
Why couldn't we do this? One version tells us fasting and prayer is what is needed. However, my final statement is prayer and fasting without believing is still unbelief. Prayer and fasting without believing is still unbelief. Everybody stand in the presence of God. I don't know where you are in your life. What I do know is that every single one of us has some struggle with unbelief. And with this cure that the Holy Spirit has given us, it is time for us to what? Walk into the cure of unbelief. Repent. Believe. What's the other one? What's the other one? Obey. Oh, obey. What's the other one? Pray, pray, pray. And fasting. Prayer, 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 and fasting. Church, it is time for us to cure our unbelief. Father, for I pray, if there's anyone online or in the house that you are not saved, and your unbelief is different than the Christian that you're standing beside unbelief, your unbelief is that you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I give you Jesus this morning. I give you Jesus this afternoon. If you're in line and you like to surrender your heart to Jesus, will you just raise your hand on this platform? If you're in the church and you like to surrender, you don't know Jesus and you want to surrender and start a new walk in this 2023, the 15th day. Already 15th day of January. And you know if Christ was to make an appearance, no, you will not make it into heaven. If you would like to surrender your life to Jesus, may I see your hand, please, whether online or in the hall. If you're in the hall, I'm going to need man of God to help me. Let me know if anybody raised their hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. 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 So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any hands at all from the hall? No? Okay. No. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Almighty God, that even as you have spoken into our spirits. Lord, we recognize that there's a struggle that we have in this walk. And this struggle is called unbelief. But Father, we thank you that you have given us the cure. And we are determined this morning, this afternoon, to Lord, as of today, walk Walk in the spirit of belief. Father, your word says, is there anything too hard for you? And you answered it yourself. Lord, you said, no. All things are possible with Christ. So, Father, I decree and declare that as a church, as a people, the people of God, whether it is kingdom builders or by extension, that we will submit to you. We'll submit to your lordship. Lord, that we'll repent of our unbelief. That, Father, as we repent and turn away, Father, we'll obey you, we'll believe, and we'll pray, and we'll fast. And there are other things, God, that we should do. But, Father, we pray that we will start with those. Lord, I pray even as we heard this morning 
that it is time to make an investment in our Christian walk. Lord, we submit this time that we spent with you. Father, be glorified, be magnified, be exalted. Move in our midst, not just now, but for the rest of the week. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen and amen. Amen. Over to you, 